Welcome to Guards Polo Club in Windsor, the setting for this year's Coronation Cup. Today, England take on South Africa, and the prospect of high goal international polo combined with perfect weather will no doubt make for a fantastic day of sport and socialising. Fans of all ages have gathered to watch these two teams do battle. The last time they played each other was way back in 1994, with England winning comprehensively. It's a lovely day today, so I'm uh enjoying the, the lovely weather that we have today and um, yeah pretty much expecting what, what will happen with the, with the match uh, this afternoon um, I think it's going to be um, a good one so I'm quite excited to see what happens like uh, both teams are, are going to be really going for, for it so I guess we're going to have a really good match. I love the acceleration, just the, the way the, the power of the ponies, they just they go and there's, it almost seems like nobody's in control, but the ponies know exactly what to do. I, of course they are, uh, no disrespect. Um, it's, it, I love the excitement and a couple of glasses of champagne in the sunshine, what more could you want? It's kind of one of those quintessential British things, isn't it? And uh, we're watching England play the South Africans today, so, you know, Great sporting rivalry there with the cricket and all the rest of it, so it should be good. With anticipation for the Coronation Cup match haunting up, let's first turn our attentions to the Hurlingham and Prince of Wales teams who competed earlier today for the Diamond Jubilee Trophy. The first chance of the game fell to Prince of Wales number three, Dirk Gold. Here come the Prince of Wales team. Tom Hunt launches himself at that ball and it's gone straight across the goal and out of play. Hurlingham with the first to score thanks to Jack Richardson's great end-to-end -end goal, giving his team a half-goal advantage. Jack Richardson escaping the attentions of Ollie Cudmore. He's launched himself at that ball. That's gone all the way down towards the goal. Is it going to go all the way here? He might just have to finish it off. He hooks back, he taps down towards the goal and it's stick a ball and it's there. What a great score. First score for the Hurlingham team. Prince of Wales fought back strongly, but couldn't quite find the goal with a speculative long-range effort from Jack Archibald. Jack Archibald riding hard here. Oh, that's gone off his pony's legs. He's got another shot at it here. Max Charlton's covering him. There's the shot towards the goal, but I'm afraid that's not going to be accurate enough, and that's out of play. Midway through the first chucker, Harlingham were still half a goal to the good, but seemed unable to extend their lead, thanks to some solid defending from the Prince of Wales team. Ollie Cudmore eventually found space, but just couldn't hit the target. Cudmore on that loose ball. Now, can he get the Prince of Wales team on the board here? He's trickling it down towards the goal. He has a little shot. He's put it wide. Max Charlton now for Hurlingham, taking that ball down towards the goal. Tom Hunt trying to apply the pressure. Under the neck and lofted and through, and that's goal number two for Hurlingham. George Merrick fires the pass to the front door. Who's on the other end of it? Max Charlton's there, and he's unmarked. Oh, my word, this is going to look very, very easy. There's the under neck shot down towards the goal. Three unanswered goals to Hurlingham. Going into the third chucker, Prince of Wales still hadn't scored. And thanks to an unfortunate knock-in by Tom Hunt's own pony, their luck didn't seem to be improving. Tom Hunt applying the pressure, and Tom Hunt's pony's kicked that through, so that's a goal to Hurlingham. Try as they might, the Prince of Wales team just weren't strong enough in attack, and Hurlingham's Max Charlton saw to it that Prince of Wales were punished for their earlier misses. Up to the front here, it's hotly pursued here by George Merrick, but Max Charlton's there unmarked. They've got the overlap of Hurlingham. Charlton taking that down towards the goal. There's nothing Jack Archibald can do. That's the fifth score for Hurlingham. Some great step work by Ollie Cudmore helped to reduce the deficit to just two and a half goals. George Merrick trying to get on terms. Cudmore now under the neck. Oh, that's a lovely shot, and it's gone through, and a great score for the Prince of Wales team. Taking that ball forward, Dirk Gould, he's left it behind, followed up well by Oli Cudmore. Now, what can that Dirk Gould do about this? The answer is not very much. Oli Cudmore's there on the near side and has put it through the goal. Great score. Go 
Heading into the final chucker, it seemed like a comeback was on the cards for Prince of Wales, but their hopes were dashed when the ever-present Max Charlton pounced him a scuffed clearance to extend Hurlingham's lead once again. Jack Archibald desperate in defence, but Charlton's not going to miss from that range. Good goal. Despite that early Hurlingham goal, the fifth chucker was all about the Prince of Wales team, strong in attack and solid in defence, but even with almost all of the possession, they just couldn't hit the target. In the end, it was Hurlingham's Richard Looper who came closest to scoring again. Hurlingham, however, had already done more than enough winning by a convincing margin. The final score, six goals to three and a half. On a hot day like today, it's absolutely vital that the horses are kept cool, both for the sake of the match performance, but more importantly, for their safety and well-being. With the horses fit and ready to go, it's now all down to the players and their coaches. The Coronation Cup is, it's probably the biggest game of the season, you know, in terms of speed and and preparation, you know, the English always have the advantage over any country that plays today because they have the support of the people, the support of the people that lend horses, and, you know, it's their home ground. In terms of preparation, I think, uh, you know, I've been very involved on, on, on the team that we played during the season with uh, James Byme and Luke. We played together. We've been working together as a team, but also thinking that today, is the final of, of, of the season for them and, and with Malcolm uh, you know coming into the team with, with Mark Tomlinson which has played before you know they, they make a great crew they, they, they are really confident and, and they play well together. The English side is obviously very experienced they I think have an average age of approximately 32 and I think our guys uh, average age is pro approximately 10 years younger so uh, you know that can you can see that in, in two lights. One is obviously they clearly have, have got 10 more years polo under the belt. At the same time, the pressure's on them. Um, personally, I wouldn't like to be 32 and beaten by a bunch of kids at the age of 22. Um, our guys, what have they got to lose? You know, I played for the, uh, the Commonwealth against England earlier in the year and we won that game and, uh, you know, um, that England, the last English Test match, we didn't look too much into it. We couldn't really get the team that we, we wanted to. And uh, you know, today it's just a, it's a case of um, you know everyone seems to be well mounted and we have to we have to play well. You know, we have had a very good practice together on Thursday at Le Leon against a very strong team. Um, but we've also played together a lot over the last four or five years. This team's circulation of the Audi England squad has been fairly consistent over the last four or five years. So in terms of our team's preparation, I think we're, 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 in, we're in a good place. Obviously, we now need to put that together you know, for a good performance today. Um, the South African team has changed last minute, which obviously has been in our thoughts. And if anything, for me, it's actually made the team stronger with no disrespect to Sugar Eskin, who unfortunately couldn't make it. What they've got in Tom DeBrain is a player who's won two very major medium goal tournaments this season. He's an extremely well-mounted player and all his own horses are here. So I think, if anything, it will give them, it'll free up that team to play with and express themselves. They're four young guys who are desperate to prove themselves at this level. So I think, if anything, it re reinforces their team. Um, our Audi England team, we've been you know, together now for four years and we're looking forward to carrying off where we left off last time against New Zealand. Uh, we've watched a few of the videos and the English are very solid, they don't make mistakes, they hit the ball clean and they play very simple. So we'll have to do the same, if we make mistakes and give them green grass goals we'll, we'll be in trouble and we'll have to try to use more quicker style of play, like more than what we used to. Luckily with the weather and the last, couple of, the last week it's been good so the field should be more open and running for us. No, we'll try and spread it as open as possible and play quickly. We're familiar foursome and we know each other's play quite well. Um, we played as a team, must be, I don't know, 10, 15 games together. So we've got, a, I think that's our, our, to our advantage, obviously. So we prepared like, like we've been preparing um, for all those other games um, and we're, we're confident. With the pre-match parade about to begin, it's time for the crowd to take their seats for what is sure to be a memorable Coronation Cup.
So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome here to Cars Polo Club for the 2012 Audi International. The new sponsors taken over from Cartier, the long-standing sponsor. But this is going to be an epic battle between England and South Africa. We have the experience and the talent with England, but fireworks could flare up with the South African boys. Their average age of 22 versus the average age of 32. So it's uh, welcome here also to my co-commentator Eduardo Hegi, one of the legendary captains of Argentina who won here in 2000. Um, we'd just like to say hello to you, Russo. Good afternoon, thank you, Chris. Uh, I'm ready to enjoy the day. You know, it's a huge day, one of the biggest days in the uh, Polo World Calendar. It's a beautiful day. We are lucky today. We are after having a horrible season with the rain and uh, over here in England. It's sunny, it's a little bit windy, so it's perfect conditions to play polo. Here we have the lineup playing in the number one position. It's John Duplessis playing off six goals. Chris McKenzie off five goals, playing in the number two position. Now here we have at number three, the Man Mountain. He's got arms like an orangutan. It's Nachi Duplessis, eight goals. And at back, he's fresh from winning the Royal Windsor. Uh, it gets you, wasn't it, Russo? Yeah. Uh, it's uh, Tom De Bruyne. Capacity crowd here, the weather is superb. Here he is, he's the people's favourite in the crowd. They'll go wild for this man. Playing of seven goals this year is James Byme. Mark Tomlinson playing off six goals. Here's his older brother, the captain of England, Luke Tomlinson. And it's Malcolm Borick in the number four shirt. So the two umpires, Julian Appleby and JJ Alberti. JJ Alberti, here they are. Very experienced umpires here. I like the style of JJ's umpiring. No mess, no nonsense. Gets on with it. England is the favourite today, but anything can happen. It's a really young and talented team, the South African, and they're going to give a go for sure. After Berners ready to go, is JJ just about to throw this first ball in. So straight away from that backhand, there's James Byme pounces on the ball. Right in front, Gene Duplessis with a fantastic little hook there. The one thing I like about these South African players, they, they play a really good classic four-man polo. They know where everyone is and they pass the ball fantastically well. So first on to it now, Nachi, Nachi Duplessis. He can run this from end to end whenever he likes. Big shot, doesn't quite get it as cleanly as he wanted to. Chris McKenzie just goes over the top, but Malcolm Borick, beautiful near side open backhand. First to turn on it, it's that man by me. Look at the marking of Mark Tomlinson as he takes out Chris McKenzie. It's by me. This could put the first goal on the scoreboard. By me, centers it up. It's on the right hand side of the goal. He hasn't hit a great shot, but it's going close. It's going close. Oh, the backhand miss. It's off the post. First to put it in, Mark Tomlinson. Great discipline there from Mark Tomlinson, backing up, marking the man. Very unlucky there for Chris McKenzie not to hit the backhand. But you see that South Africa, because they're playing off 25, they've already got one goal head start on the board in handicap. And by me, that, like I said, that first chucker, the nerves, that no one's hitting the ball cleanly. What do you reckon? I think that Chris, he, he has a good shot here by me. Chris McKenzie thought that the ball was going out, probably. He was waiting and waiting, and then he couldn't see. You see that he didn't swim to the ball, he thought it was going to hit the goalpost and go out. Lucky for England, Mark Tomlinson had an easy shot to the goal and it's the first goal of the game. Nachi Duplessis now looking up, looking up, taking his time. And this boy needs to keep get a bit of air time on the ball, leaves it now for Tom. Launches that, comes a big bruise on the ball. Now first up to it, Chris McKenzie, he's got the flying pony. He's gone straight in front, Mark Tomlinson could do nothing. There's Luke, Luke's crash right in front. And we have the first foul of the game. Didn't really need to do that. He put himself in a good position, Luke. He, he had the legs. Didn't really need to do such an acute angle. He was coming with a big angle. Chris, he was really intelligent here at the last moment. He stopped a little bit his horse. He let Luke come across a little bit in front. And a foul is going to be a 30 yard for the South African team. Yeah. A penalty from the spot. Open goal. 
Goal for South Africa, Tom De Bruyne. Really important today is going to the, the, the penalties. Uh, English, he should have an advantage. Look, he's a really a Malcolm experienced player. He's uh, going to be one of the keys of this game. If South Africa they are able to score the goals, then they are going to have a chance to, to win it and grab the trophy. So straight away, Malcolm Boric pounces on that ball. He's got the run on that beautiful grey gelding of his that he brought over from Australia a couple of seasons ago. Leaves the ball there for Tomlinson. Tomlinson. This is the experience. He sees the goal. Have a shot. Digs it. Shovels one up. Mark Tomlinson. The big ride off. The big ride off's good. It's straight through. That's a great goal. Not the cleanest of shots. But look at the work that Mark Tomlinson does. He does more work off the ball than on the ball. So that for me, he's a, he's a great member of the team. They're really experienced. Look, he wait. He he knew that the Tommy was going to be in trouble. The ball was bouncing. He stopped. He looked behind, and then he watched. He saw the goal there, and then he didn't try to overheat it. And there, Mark, he did a really good job on Chris McKenzie. Don't let him hit in the backhander. So, two all in this first chucker, not long left. The big neck shot there from Boric sets up by me. By me taking it to the boards. He's got the horse on Tom De Bruyne. Tom De Bruyne hasn't got the legs, but he's got the ride off. By me gets called to leave it though. Luke Tomlinson on the near side, he can't keep hold of it. As Nachi Duper sees, horse just slips on it back leg there it's very unlike him Chris McKenzie out turns Mark Tomlinson great bit of play Malcolm Boric's got John Duplessis to contend with he's he's drawn between the two players Chris McKenzie just has to take his time he's 19 but he's hit that like a 90 year old cool calm and collected in front of goal he's left it behind who's there saves the day Mark Tomlinson there's the big open back and there from Nachi Duplessis it looks good it looks great it looks like a goal yeah, it looks like, like a goal exactly Beautiful backhand there from Nachi Duplessis. Chris McKenzie did all the work to get that all the way down the sides, had loads of time. Thought he should have done a little bit better with this one here, a bit, bit stronger with the stick maybe. Mark Tomlinson, you've got to get rid of that ball better than that. You've got to clear it out the way. Look at him, takes a little look over his shoulder. Massive backhand straight through. Just to keep that one goal advantage is crucial. That'll end the first chucker with South Africa. Just the narrowest of handicap margins, three goals to two. Talented and young team, the South Africans with a great future. The average is 22 against 32. There we have Malcolm Bowie, he did a good backhander. And Tom De Bruyne is doing really well there, staying at the back. Eh? No, but it's quite easy when you're at the back door there. You, you're the first one to read it. I mean, you were the, the classic, the, 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 the one of the best number fours in the world. And, and you get a good perspective or, or a good view of the game. And it's only when you get caught your trousers down that, that <laughs> the number one gets away. And it's so painful to watch when you're chasing back. So the whistle went there as a 5B awarded to England. A hit from the centre, so Boric, he could put this in from here. He's obviously going to go for it. That's the, the normal rule of thumb for the England team is pump it up there, get it right up to the number ones. Number two is Luke Tomlinson. Luke Tomlinson streaches out. He's got arms like an orangutan there. He defends that brilliantly. Chris McKenzie, the backhand, comes off by me. But like that, we said, Tom DeBrain read it like a book, leaving it for John Duplessis. John Duplessis, you're not going to get that son, not in this sort of level. Here he goes, Luke Tomlinson. Luke Tomlinson avoids the hook of Tom DeBrain. Couldn't quite get the hook, puts it through three goals to peace. Yesterday, John Duplessis would have got that foul in the 15 goal, but not at this level, I don't think. No, no, no. Here, Tom De Bruyne, he tried to hit a, a tail shot. He did too much into the middle. Look, he really, really well the play. He took the ball, he had the time, he tapped the ball, and uh, Tom De Bruyne, he couldn't hook him. Really good goal for the captain of the English team. And uh, the good thing of England, they're winning the throw, is that that's really important, no? Well, that's a lot of experience that, that comes back into play with that discipline and they're a well-oiled disciplined team so Mark Tomlinson just coming across that just horse's legs stepping over it on the near side didn't give Natchi a, a clear shot on the ball they let the advantage go but he misses the ball so they have to blow the whistle that'll be a spot hit he just goes on top of the ball that he doesn't get the shot if he'd hit the ball they, they might have let it go but he just goes on top of it and that was a small foul a small foul yeah, yeah. He didn't put any effort into that, and he's about six foot six, arms like trees, and he's hit at 140, 145 yards. That great defensive play from Malcolm Boric just leaves it for his captain, though. 
and Mark Tomlinson on a flying machine. Oh my God, the back door is wide open for South Africa as Mark Tomlinson, all he's got to do is put it through the goal. The only person that can beat him is the bounce. One, two, he's missed it. Oh, the curse of the commentator there. I apologize, Mark. But the open backhand is not great. It's not great. Luke, look at the experience. Cool, calm, collected. Small little tail backhand comes off the horse's legs. Malcolm Borick, the big shot, the next shot, it's good. Did the whistle go? No, it's gone straight through. That's a great goal there for Malcolm Borick. Four goals to three, they storm into the lead. Really good goal for England. Luke Tomlinson, he was really intelligent. Nachi Duplessis, he did he the backhander like he, he wanted. He read the play, he turned before of him. He waited for Malcolm, he put the ball in for him, and he had a really good next shot, and he's England ahead now. You would have got that, wouldn't you? You would have just... Tuk, tuk, tuk. Yeah, I missed many of them. I missed yeah. lots of those as well. There you can see that look, he, hit a, he didn't try to hit it too hard. Perfect tail shot for Malcolm. Malcolm, easy shot. There, by me. Wow. Yeah. Silly mistake of England. By me, he has to let Tom De Bruyne to hit that ball. Maybe he did that because Nachi was Nachi Duplessis. He was gone, so he tried to stop the the play from there. No. We see there that uh, Mark Luke tried to pass. He got blocked, and that's uh, like a sandwich also. And by me, he crossed there in front of Tom De Bruyne. It's going to be a 60 yard in favor of South Africa. Look at that. It's going to come down with ice on it. That's a beautiful goal straight through. Oh, England, they're not happy with that. Tom thinks it's a goal. He's cantering back, but he hit it high. The umpire was perfectly positioned. I don't think they're going to give it. Let's see what they said. The, that we can see on the replay. It's Maybe a bit too high too for high. our... Uh, too high for us. It was with the win at Lee TV. The goal judge is right on the post. That'll end the second chucker with England still with the narrowest of margins. Four goals to three, they lead. Oh, the crowd on the edge of their seats. We can hear them from here. There's a lovely backhand there from Luke Thomason. Mark Malcolm beautifully turned around by Boric, but by me, he's on it. He's flicked it, tapped it once, offside, near side, he's left it behind. Mark Thomason, Mark Thomason, Powell drives that one straight into the goal mouth. By me, on the near side, near side again, near side again. Backhand there from Chris McKenzie. Whistle stays silent. No, he looked all right to me as well. There's Luke Thomason, Luke Thomason, the big next shot. Oh, he's just wide to the right. I thought by me had that. He was on the near side all the way, but the rules state you don't have a right away on the near side, which I don't really understand. But anyway, here's by me. Brill brilliant pickup here. Talk us through this, Russo. No, there he crossed a little bit, Chris McKenzie. I thought even that by me he had the ball on the near side. Chris came with a big angle. That's the experience of Luke Tomlinson, that he can have more time than the rest of the play looks, no? So who's on the ball now? Luke Tomlinson. John Duplessis does enough to put him off his shot, and so does Nachi Duplessis. It's right in front of him. Oh, he's just come over that. He's left it behind. And that's another steal there from John Duplessis. By me, by me, beautiful shot. Lofts it high up into the air, but Tom De Brain is back there. All these boys, they're panicking, they're rushing on the ball, they're not getting the time on the ball that they need. They're rushing their plays, and by me, he's got two of them. There's going to be an overlap somewhere because there's two greens and only one white. The big shot from Mark Thomason, is it good? It's great, superb goal. It was Malcolm Borick, actually, on my apologies. So that's what I said, there was the overlap. Two green players going back in desperate defence, leaving Malcolm. I completely right, Chris. You can see there, there by me, he took two of the South African players, he hit a horse, then uh, Mark Tomlinson took Nachi Duplessis, and Malcolm he came, he hit a great next shot between the goalposts, great goal for England. No, Nachi just goes over the top there, leaves it for John Duplessis, who doesn't get a great shot once again. But first on the ball is Bimey. Bimey centres that one. Who's got the legs? It's Mark Tomlinson. Mark Tomlinson, he's right in front. He's got this once, twice. This could be the nail in the coffin for six goals to three. Why did he change onto near side? He's changed over to the near side. The whistle has gone. I don't see who's fouled there, but I think Mark has, isn't he? My great play by Jean-Marc Duplessis. There. 
look, he was on the next, his brother Nachi, and now he's coming. Mark Tomlinson saw him that he was coming. He tried to change, go on the near side. Dangerous play, and it's going to be a foul for South Africa. So that ends the third chucker halfway through this 2012 Audi International with England in lead by two goals, five goals to three. As the crowd descends onto the pitch for the time-honoured half-time tradition of treading in, it's clear that some are taking their responsibilities slightly more seriously than others. So the experienced England team are ahead and leading fairly comfortably at half-time. But with three chuckers still to play, this young South African team aren't beaten yet. You know, it's a very positive first half for us. We've got to keep winning the throw-ins, we've got to be really tight. And, you know, the way we play is, you know, first the man and then the balls. We've got to stop them playing. We mustn't get too carried away with trying to get into too much of a rhythm and, and playing too, too flash. But, you know, stop them and then we play. That's what we're going to keep trying to do. Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the second half of this 2012 Audi International. We finished the third chucker with a penalty in favour of South Africa with the score at five goals to three. I'm here with Eduardo Hege, superstar legend of... Argentine Polo. So far, it's been a really good game. England is uh, more experienced play uh, players now, they're doing fine. South Africa, they are rushing a little bit, they're missing the backhanders and hitting the horses. But everything can change in the last three chakras. Yeah, so they've got two experienced coaches on the sideline, they've gone off, they've had that half an hour interval. We need to see this man, Natty Hege, needs to set, the, set the, the, the trail lights on and this is it, this is the sort of goal that he needs to be scoring. It's Luke Thomason, that's a beautifully timed ride off there. Critical bit of defence there from the England captain. Sets up his brother Mark who's on a flying pony, taps it once or does he get hooked by Chris McKenzie? There's the near side backhand from John Duplessis, Mark, Malcolm. Malcolm with Tom De Bruyne. Tom just leaves it there by me. James Byne with a beautiful open backhand. First to turn though. Nachi Duplessis got the ball. Luke Tomlinson is playing really, really well eh, today. There's the big cover drive. It's John Duplessis. He's gone for a big shot. Is it good? It is. It's straight through. We haven't seen John Duplessis that much uh, of this game, but he's just come out the fourth chucker and snotted one straight through. He didn't have the opportunities first time that he has a shot to the goal, and he scored a really good goal. Eh? There we can see a strong hook of look of uh, Nachi Duplessis. Makuki protect his shoulders. Good shot between the goalposts. Great goal for South Africa. So once again there, Luke. Cross hook, cross hook. You cannot hook, you cannot cross behind the, the horse of the other player. You have to be in the same side. Oh, you Isha. can't? You oh. cannot. That's where I'm going wrong. Yeah, he's just missed time there. Look at him, he pops out the side of the saddle. <laughs> That's commitment to your country, isn't it? No, yeah, but they're unbelievable. This, you always go surprised by the South Africans. They are a hell of a riders. And they, don't, they look that they're not scared, no? Because they are young. They are really strong and they are not scared and they do all, kind, all those kind of plays. It's going to cost him probably a goal. It's going to be a, a 40 yard. Horses coming in nice, calm and collected, well practiced, trains, practices his penalties religiously. No mistake from Luke Tarlton, it's perfect. He hit a bit of a worm burn, I bet it was straight, it was good. And there was no chance for John Duplessis to come across and save that. Oh, he gives that a lovely loft. That's exactly what we want to see. Perfectly teed ball, executed immaculately. Malcolm Borick tops the open backhand though, but there's the fake backhand. John Duplessis, that's a bit better from him. He's a big, strong lad too. All the way from South Africa here today is Luke Thomason. Near side backhand. Malcolm Borick is a backhand fest at the moment. Chris McKenzie, his horse just punches up. He doesn't get the run, but there's Tom DeBrain. It's James Byme, James Byme. He's on the near side, angled next shot, scabs it. It's great. It's just inside. Beautiful goal there from young James Byme. Really good goal, really important. 
the extent the, dif the, the, the difference now is a really good shot, near side shot from James Vine, the number one of the English squad. There, uh, Jan Duplessis, sorry, Chris McKenzie, he got a little bit on travel, trying to turn before the other one. Bam, he won the position, he left the ball on the near side and he hit a perfect near under the next shot. And it's not easy, the ball is bouncing quite a lot. It's uh, You get that erratic bounce that you don't know what it's going to do. That's why the, you've got to respect these players that they, they're playing at the top level at this speed and managing to hit the ball cleanly. As we see here from Nachi Duplessis just controlling the ball. For me, I'd like to see him hitting the ball a bit more, stretching the players. There's four of them out there. It's not just about one player. He's got to start using his team and be a captain. Oh, a bit of miscommunication there. Luke Tomlinson now on the near side backhand. Unluckily comes off the horse of John Duplessis, but it's Tom DeBrain. Tom DeBrain, little open backhand, gets called to leave it. It's John Duplessis. The big reaching backhand there. Now, now this is Duplessis. This is bread and butter for him. Taps it once, twice. Three times, no stopping him. There it is. Two goal game now again. Unbelievable, Nachi Duplessis. He has uh, such a long arms, so strong. No, we were going to see him. He stole the ball from Luke Tomlinson. Malcolm, he tapped there in there. He passed Malcolm Warwick, and then he needed the chance uh, short taps to score a really good goal for South Africa and really important at this moment. No. Ball gets thumped in by the umpire, Julian Appleby. Leaves it now, Bime, he comes all the way from the front to the back and around everyone, around the doors, he's gone, he hasn't got the run, so he takes the uh, decision to check his pony down. The big tail backhand there from Tom DeBrain. Tom DeBrain leaves it, Malcolm Borick, lovely tail backhand. Who's on that now? Who's on it? It's Tom DeBrain, he read it really well, he can't come in there, James Bime. But Tom DeBrain releases the ball, it's all the way over to the right-hand side, right in front of that north grandstand here at Garth's Polo Club, it's Malcolm Borick. Open backhand, first time we've seen him miss one of those. Leaves it for Chris McKenzie. The call is hit it, son. It's Tom DeBrain. Tom DeBrain, he can get this back to a one goal game. He's tapped it once. It's looking great. It's looking fantastic. That's what we like to see from South Africa. Hitting the ball, running it up and down, and finishing off some legendary goals. Really good play for South Africa and good backhander. Chris McKenzie got the ball. Unlucky there for Malcolm Warwick that he missed the backhander. Good pass to Tom the Brain that he went from the number four position to number one. Short taps and an important goal. Now it's only one goal difference. That is the bell. That finishes the uh, fourth chucker. No, it's still anyone's game. The ball gets punched up now. Chris McKenzie, the sticks are off. We can't quite see it, but Luke Tomlinson. Luke Tomlinson first on it. Lovely backhand. Malcolm Boris sucks in two greens and then goes away with it. There is Nachi Duplessis. Gets a massive bump in the chops from Mark Tomlinson. Oh, that looked painful. Let's see what they call. No, This is a really difficult situation because Nachi Duplessis was a little bit coming with a little bit of angle. But I think that Mark Tomlinson just got in and he finished fouling. You see, Malcolm he had the line. Nachi Duplessis was going to come on the near side. There is his brother, and then Mark came and put the legs of his horse in front of Nachi Duplessis. Probably we'll see what they call. It can be uh, any way. Eh? Well, I think that's a, a definite foul against Mark Tomlinson, and it'll probably go a spot hit to South Africa because the only one on the line was Malcolm. Nachi, you're right. He did have a bit of angle, but he's quite entitled to hit that backhand. And Mark just came in from nowhere and uh, yeah, got in, got in yes. the way. Let's see the third man what he says. Yeah. Probably they're asking the third oh, man. Oh, 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 he must be English. <laughs> must be. <laughs> oh, it's Robert Graham and Paul, Paul Withers. Withers. Paul Withers, two of England's classic umpires. So, yeah, they would have had a good view, though, but not like us. We had a good chance to see it on the rewind, which is unfortunate for South Africa, especially if England get this. The near side, the open back end. Oh, Nachi Duplessis just puts it over his own back line, but I think it came off his pony's leg. A bit of justice there because I didn't agree with that umpire decision. Exactly, I agree with you, Chris. There uh, was a good opportunity. Mark got the ball. Nachi Duplessis was coming. Mark, he had the ball a little bit at the back. Look, asked for that ball. He had a good open shot and he had a little bit of the leg of uh, Nachi Duplessis' horses and went out. No, we're straight away with the big appeal there from John Duplessis. We didn't quite see what happened there, but it looks like the ball has just popped over the sidelines. Now we a throw in. Nachi. Malcolm. Malcolm got hit, I think, probably with the... 
with the mallet, probably, no? There we're going to see Malcolm there behind with the red helmet. Luke Tomlinson and Jan Douglas is fighting for the ball. We cannot see well because there is Malcolm there. there. Yeah, a bit of dirt has flicked up a stone from the ground. Just got him in the eyes. No, it's still anyone's game. As we go for a throw in there, the ball did pop over the sideline. The umpire just throws it in. Luke Tomlinson. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Really intelligent look. He waited for Nachi Duplessis to cross the line. He didn't want to play the ball and hit any of the horses. We'll see what they give. Probably it's going to be a penalty from the spot in favour of England. There we see the ball. Luke has the ball on the right side and Nachi Duplessis coming with an angle. Nice shot, by me on the near side. Oh, I don't believe it. Oh, you, you, he don't remember this shot that poor by me, eh? Especially if they lose. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't, don't say it. I didn't say it. I, I said it, didn't I? He positioned well, uh, really well himself. He took Tom the brain. He left the ball on the near side like he did it in the goal that he scored before and he hit it a little bit with the cane the goal the ball bounced a little bit and he hit, he got it with the cane yeah it was a bit really unlucky la really lucky for South Africa so he's straight back in with the action it's Mark Tomlinson he's left that ball for Bimey Bimey's going to make amends Bimey he's gone round him he's gone round the outside that's Boric Boric no it's Chris McKenzie my apologies there Chris McKenzie punches that away on the next shot it's Luke Tomlinson hard push there it's John Duplessis John Duplessis gets nothing on that next shot and nor does Tom Debrain they've left it right back in there 60 yard line it's Luke Tomlinson right in front of goal he needs to put this through for England for his country it's Luke oh he's gone over the top of it again they've taken it away in defense Tom De Brain, Tom De Brain goes around the boards up the corner and it just pops over. That was a desperate attempt there. England needed that one. Really good defensive play there from the South African. You're going to see the Luke Tomlinson. He left the ball a little bit on the near side. Nachi Duplessis, he pushed him really, really hard. He made him go over the ball and then took Tom De Brain, saved the, the play. No? He's got to get a move on. That's open play for me. That's well played there from Nachi Duplessis. He's just put it under his neck. Let Tom Debrain release the dogs. He's gone. Look, he's on a flying machine. Tom Debrain, he's on the near side now. Near side. Oh, he's just gone over it. He's left it behind. Chris McKenzie, Mark Tomlinson. What are you doing there? I think that might go against England. We had to see the replay. Mark Tolson looking like he had the ball on the near side, and in the last moment he moved it to the right. We'll see there, Tom the brain. He's going to try to hit a, a near side shot. He flipped a little bit the ball. Let's see, Mark Tolson. He had the ball. No. No, no. He's all We're right. wrong. He's right. We're wrong. Well, well they've no. given it to South Africa. Oh, we were right. We were right. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a match-changing decision. And they've got it completely wrong. You never know. You have to be lucky also with the course. Really You've got to be lucky. So Tom De Bruyne, 30 yard penalty. Or 40. Is Let's see 40? if they are defending or undefending. It's a 40. 40 yard. 40 yard. He hit it. We're really lucky. Eh? Really lucky because he went between the legs of Bimey's horse. He didn't hit it the way that he wanted. It's not the best of penalties. But as long as it goes through the sticks, it doesn't matter what it looks yeah, like. Exactly the same. So he tried to overheat it. He went with his body a little bit up. He hit the top of the ball, and they were really lucky. 7-0. Well, there goes the bell. That'll end the fifth chakra with an all-tight game. 7-0. Would you believe it? And all from that one bad decision. Starting last chakra. Well done by me there, waiting for the ball. Waiting, and now trying to, to run it. He has the horse. Good neck shot. And Tom De Bruyne is really there at the back. Not the backhand that he wanted. Ooh, a couple of fouls over there. Well, the whistle's gone there. I thought the first foul was uh, was a biggie, even though Mark really wasn't on the line. He was on the right of way, the direction. And it was a, a big cross there from Chris McKenzie. No, Nancy from Nachi Duplessis. Yeah. Yeah, oh. Duplessis. Even that Mark, he had the ball on the near side. Nachi Duplessis, he was coming with 90 degrees. Down the brain, he didn't, he couldn't hit the backhand the way that no. he wanted. No, the ball was a little bit bouncing. He had to wait a little bit more. Mm, he didn't hit a good backhander, and now it's a really good chance, 30 yard for England to get ahead in the last chakra.
There it is, very nonchalant, relaxed swing. That's the England captain, that's why he's our captain, because he can take this on the chin. He's wearing that shirt for a reason. He hits that cool hand, Luke, straight through, 8-7, puts us where we should be, which is in the lead. Takes it left, so he opens the right-hand side of the field. Tom Debrain has gone up for the run, he's gone up for the pass, but there's plenty of blocking going on from Chris McKenzie on James Bine. Now it's Mark Tomlinson, now it's Nachi Duplessy, puts the afterburners on, he can do this all on his own. Snots that one right into the centre of the goal. Who's going to get there? Is it going to make it? It's Tom Debrain. It's come off the post. Oh, my God, I don't believe it. But John Dupacy was there, luckily for South Africa, to put it through. I don't... I, I can't what believe play, he did that. We, when we thought it was going to be a goal with a really good pass from Nachi Duplessis there. Perfect pass to Tom Debrain. And there he got the ball and hit the goal post. Lucky that Jan Duplessis was behind and finished it scoring the good goal. It's a tie game and not many minutes left on the clock. Eh? South, South Africa, Africa in attack again. Nachi Duplessis with the ball and Jan Duplessis, his brother, is going behind. He's leaving the ball for him. He's opened up. He's taken it himself. Good. He's got to hit it. Hit it. He's hit it. He's punched it. He's hit it wide. Oh, my God. Oh my God, what a mistake at the maker. Poor Makuki, he had a, he wait, he wait, he had a, the chance, open goal there. He made Mark Tomlinson, Luke Tomlinson there, pass behind, perfect. Malcolm, he couldn't go to that play because if not, it was a foul. And he overheated and went into the left. Really lucky this time for England. Eh? Baimi's been taken out of the game there, but now baimi has got the big ride off again. Chris McKenzie, the lovely big ride off Luke Tomlinson. He's only going to left it behind. He's going to have to get the backhand. He's got the backhand. It's opened up his shoulders. The ball's there. It's Baimi. He's all on his own. He's got the field. He's got the horse. He's got the ball skills. Come on, my son. Time also. Don't you dare. Oh, I don't believe it. I don't believe what I've just seen. Eight all, oh, and he goes and misses. It's back inside. He's got another bite at the cherry. Come on, by me for your country. Open your shoulders. There it is. Oh, he's only got it missed it again. <laughs> I don't believe this. There's a minute left on the clock. Unbelievable, unbelievable game, eh? He should have put that away, punished them for their mistakes. Look, Tomlinson hit the open shot. Mark it really, really well. They know you don't have to foul, but uh, you don't have to stop there and give the chance to an uh, easy goal, no? Well, whoever scores next, in my eyes, is going to win this because there's 30 seconds left on the clock. If it's still tied, there'll be another 30 seconds. They're right inside their 60-yard zone. We've got the most experienced player on the field with the ball. Malcolm, he's gone for the long shot. He's hit the cover drive towards goal. It's trickling. It's close. By me. By me. Gets the stick. He's, for by me. For He's by won me. it for his country, James Pine, after losing it, missing that easy goal. There it goes. That's the bell, that's the bell, the final bell. England won it, eh? There goes the final bell with literally nanoseconds left on the clock. Baimi gets the turn, he gets the hook, he gets the ball, he gets the goal after missing it. Third time lucky, as we oh, see. Poor. Thank God for Baimi, he knew it was going to be a, a tough day for him. He had two chances, and then the third one he scored. Probably one of the, his most important goals in his career, no? There are some players that they are, we would like to see the replay. There are some South African players arguing about the is a foul or not. We'll see there, Luke Tomlinson, he left the ball for Malcolm. He looked to the goal, he hit a perfect shot. They were going to see that by me has a, a first chance to, with the Bahander and he the horse a little bit and then he go he goes he cooks Nachi Duplessis and he had an easy two yard shot to win the Coronation Cup again. Yeah, there's no foul there. There's nothing they can complain. He's turned around legally. He's on the near side. He's hooked him. That's a great play from James Byam. Look at the Cartier clock going off at the top end. Really good game. Both teams they had the chances, no. South Africa with a really young team, they did it a great game, no? And, and England, they played well. It was a game of, well, the cliche, it was a game of two halves because the first three chuckers was England, England, England the whole way. Then fourth chucker, South Africa pounced straight away, get right back into the game. They tied up. England struggled the end of the fourth winning. Fifth chucker was all South Africa. The last chucker was anyone's. In the end, it was England, clinching victory in the last minute to win 9-8. We played well all game and sort of the, the, I felt that the pressure came back to us when they started coming into the scoreboard. And it's natural, you know, when you're winning, you're, you, 
you're trying to hold on to that score and suddenly you start making a few mistakes and, and the South Africans show that they're a great team. So great game, great outcome. I think I'm very happy and you know at the end of the day we won so that's what what's important. Thank you. Uh, uh, I don't know what the difference was but uh, now it's close. And uh, no we didn't start very well but then we finished a bit better. In the fourth and fifth, uh, we were still dominating, um, but in the sixth, it was anyone's game. The last two minutes, was, they had a chance to score at the top end and missed by that much, but we missed a lot of opportunities. His Royal Highness Prince Philip presents England captain Luke Tomlinson the magnificent Coronation Cup. Tomlinson also received the Most Valuable Player Award for his faultless performance. The Best Playing Pony Award went to 11-year-old gelding Yacht, owned and ridden by James Byne. So for the third year running, England are crowned winners of the Coronation Cup. They'll be back next year to defend their title. So until then, it's goodbye from the team here at Guards Polo Club.